everybody, this is Rain. I have my daughter over here with me. You wave. Here's my daughter. She's going to help me dye this beautiful merino wool and nylon combed top. I've got it soaking wet, so it's very low immersion dyeing, and we're just going to pour some dye right on top and see what happens. Valentine blush. Just wanted to mention all of these dye stocks are 1% stock solutions, meaning there are 100 milliliters of water mixed with one gram of dye. So he poured some on there and I patted it out and poured a little more after we flipped it over. And then this color is Lilac by Jacquard. My daughter helped me pour that on this side. She was there with me the whole time. She didn't really want to get her hands dirty, so I did most of the pouring and all the patting and stuff. And she was just kind of poked prodding around with one of my needleless syringes that I like to use sometimes. So after that we went ahead and added some heat and I went ahead and added citric acid to both sides. Now we have deep purple from Dharma and we poured that beautiful deep dark color right down the center and I patted it out and tried to cover up all of the white in the center. So I have a new microphone set up for this video. You guys let me know down below if the microphone voiceover quality is better in this video than prior videos on my voiceovers. The live video is always going to be the best, but I have to use voiceover for most. So just let me know if it sounds better. So we added citric acid to the entire fiber braid and pressed that in. Remember this is super wash, so there's no need to worry about felting. And here is what the braid looks like after the dye has been set. Here is our lilac from Jacquard, our deep purple from Dharma in the middle. It looks almost black. And then our Valentine blush down here, it looks like a deep dark pink. And through the magic of YouTube, I'm going to show you how much lighter these colors get after they dry. So here we go. Voila. It is so pretty. This is going to spin up so, so gorgeous. In fact, I was going to do it just a two-ply, but I loved the colors so much and the way that they melded together. I went ahead and decided to chain ply this so that we could kind of keep some of that colorway throughout our finished yarn. So I went for a fingering weight in a three-ply and this was my first attempt at it, so let's see what happens. I have my Ashford E-Spinner 3 it's set on the Z-Twist for my singles. The speed is right around the 1 o'clock position. So I have not drafted this at all, no pre-drafting. Just kind of opened it up a little bit, and I'm not really even drafting it as I go. It's very easy to spin. It's coming out nicely without drafting, just working my way across the top of the braid. Here's what the fiber looks like up close. It is a little bit of a different texture than non-superwash, but I have not spun a braid of non-superwash merino nylon blend as of yet, so I can't compare it exactly evenly to that, but I have spun a lot of non-superwash wool by itself, and it does have a slightly different texture, but it's really not too bad. If anything, it makes it a lot smoother and easier to draft, for sure. I thought this was a pretty nice clip uh, against that white background. You can see how the fibers are coming out. And as I said in the beginning, we are going for a three ply fingering weight. So this had to be spun very, very thin. A lot thinner than I'm used to going. So it was definitely a new experience, especially on the Ashford E-Spinner 3. This was for my daughter, so I was thoroughly enjoying every bit of this thin spinning. This is my favorite type of spinning. Oh, that got a little too thin. So that means it's time to show you how to connect a piece of fiber that got a little too thin, like what just happened in that clip. So I take it between my fingers and I just run my fingers and sometimes my nail down the bottom, just like so, and that will pull all of the excess twist out of that piece of fiber. You want no twist in that, nice and loose. And then we're going to pull out any little twisted bits that may be still stuck in our fiber supply and just lay it in there nice and back far enough so that your twist can catch. 
hold that twist with your finger then go ahead and press your foot pedal or turn your switch on and then just start spinning once again and just start pulling out fiber just like you normally would just pretend that that little tail that you laid in there isn't even there and the fibers will catch and you will not be able to tell the difference just like so as you can see there you can't tell at all where we joined that just now I've got some beautiful close-ups of me spinning this gorgeous fiber this was a really really fun spin and as you all know I like to go thin and I recommend if you've never spun thin before to give it a try it takes a really really long time this braid actually took me about a week to spin altogether definitely give it a try sometime it's very relaxing and therapeutic and it's my favorite way to spin I just get into that rhythm and you can feel the thickness between your fingers and kind of get it about the right way each time at least with the way I spin I'm gonna link up at the eye a few other videos on my spinning techniques if you would like to watch those for any helpful tips and tricks you might need in one of my prior videos I mentioned that I lost my spinners control card that came with my electric eel wheel nano spinning wheel so I looked all over the internet to see if I could find a printout or order one and I was able to find a free printout. You do have to fiddle with your printer settings a little bit but once you get the measurements right it is pretty accurate. So this is what it looks like and here is the website that you go to. It's vampy.co.uk. I know a few of you have asked me where I got mine and what it's called. It's completely free. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. So there's 56 and 60. I would say it's somewhere in between 56 and 60. Probably about 58. These fibers spin and draft out like butter. So while you all are enjoying some more of these gorgeous close-ups, I did want to mention this fiber. I do have a few braids that are hand dyed in my Etsy shop as of right now. It is 75% superwash fine merino wool and 25% nylon. Perfect for anything that you want to knit and throw into the washing machine. It won't felt or shrink or anything like that. Although I do recommend not using the dryer. I still am a little nervous about that but it is super wash it's supposed to be machine washable so go to rainfiberarts.com or you can check the description if you would like to check that out it all helps support my family and my tiny little micro business that I have here and to make more videos for our absolutely amazing community we have here so here is our beautiful bobbin shot I adjusted the lighting just right so you could see the colors in their truest form it was really really hard to get that lilac to pull the right shade of purple on camera and you can see underneath the deep purple is more of a red toned purple and of course that gorgeous pink I absolutely love light pink it's one of my most favorite colors in the whole world so with that said let's get to chain plying so this was my second time attempting to chain ply something and I will link my first attempt up in the eye if you're interested. Um, you can see in this first clip I was just getting started and I was using the same kind of technique that I was using in the video from before. While I was working on this braid I did find a little bit of an easier way to chain ply and I'm going to show you guys that and the difference between the two and how it makes it a little bit easier as you can see it's kind of um, a little chaotic in here which chain plying is kind of chaotic anyway but you can see it's just a little chaotic it's not really that smooth and I'm just grabbing that fiber and pulling it through and it's the angle that is the problem and I'm gonna show you guys right now what I mean all right I want you guys to watch how much smoother this movement is on this clip as you can see we're pushing pushing and then we pull that loop through and grab our next one to complete the three plies that we need together now with my left hand I have the twist held firmly and I'm and I keep pulling it back pulling it back you have to keep Pulling your twist back so that you don't get over twisted, over spun fibers. You don't want them over plied or under plied. 
and they get all messy if you let too much of that twist build up at once. You got to keep that left hand moving back and therefore keep your right hand moving constantly and pulling your loop through each time. Anyways, the difference between that first clip you saw and what I'm doing here in this clip is the angle that I'm pulling my loop through at. As you can see, we're feeding it in, feeding it in, and then I'm going to pull that loop right there. I pulled it through, and as you can see, I'm kind of keeping it coming off of the bobbin at a nice straight angle. See that? We pull it, and it keeps it nice and straight through that loop. I hope that makes sense, you guys, and then just reach up and grab your next ply. Let me know in the comments below if you would like a more in-depth video on this type of chain playing technique, and I will do my best to make another one. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to see this finished yarn, so let's take a look. My daughter and me were both so excited about this. We knew it was going to be gorgeous. Here it is. It turned out even more stunning than I could have ever imagined. Spun up as a chain applied fingering weight. At least that's what I was going for. There she is all skeined up. I just can't get enough of the light barber pulling that chain plane creates. It's so squishy and soft. It's going to make a beautiful hat, maybe some socks for my daughter. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be yet, but it will be something absolutely gorgeous, whatever it turns into. I just couldn't stop squishing it. I think this is my favorite skein that I've ever spun to date thus far. So let's go ahead and undo this skein and take a look at this drape and some of the fibers. This is after the twist has already been set and I always kind of thwack it a little bit and snap it. I don't really thwack it hard or anything. Just a couple snaps and it sets the twist. Here those beautiful fibers are up close. I was very happy with how this fiber spun and how consistent I was able to keep it. It was very very fun to spin. Now it did turn out a little bit thicker than I was hoping. Some of it is 14 wraps per inch in certain places and some of it's 20 wraps per inch in certain places. But that's totally okay. This was for my daughter so it's no big deal. And I did find my spinner's control card. So happy that I found that. Don't get me wrong, the one online was great. It worked perfect but I missed my spinner's control card that I got with my Ill Will Nano. So I'm happy for that. So here's some more of those luxurious fibers up close. And that's about all I have for today. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know how this audio sounds, if it's any better. And I will see you guys next week. I love each and every one of you. Hit that like button. It really helps the video out. And subscribe. We're almost at a thousand. I'm hoping to do a giveaway. I'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.